Hello. Ah, nice. I, I, I have to warn you, uh, you uh, uh, this is, you're going to have to watch out and maybe have, they, they haven't provided these little plastic guards because when I'm singing, there's a lot of spit <laughs> to be flying in your salad. That looks calamari. There'll be things coming out. Um, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, we're, uh, we've had a, a really amazing tour. The, the gig's really simple. It's, uh, I'm going to start with the first song that I ever wrote and go in chronological order through our back catalogue. Not all of the songs, otherwise you, you, would, be, uh, you would be here for a few nights and days. Yeah, I know, but some, some people have work in the morning. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, and then we end with the, the latest song. We've chosen about 20 songs, and, uh, and they're in chronological order um, as they start. I'm going to start with the first song that I ever did. Um. <laughs> okay, the, the, the show is kind of like, like a school project, if you think of it just like that. And you're the class, and I've done the school project. Um, so this song, uh, I was 19 years old and just about to turn 20, and I, I suddenly went into a, a, a panic. I was like, oh my god, I'm not going to be a teenager anymore. Shit, what's going to happen? Oh, because everyone prepares you for 21 and 16 and 18, but no one tells you about 20. No one prepares you for this. You're not going to be a teenager. I think the 21 thing is your... Yeah, your fault, because you all get to drink when you're 21, you know, spring break. Yeah! <laughs> and, um, so, uh, but in, in Scotland, you know, we all start drinking, at, we're about eight, and then <laughs> by the time we're 13, you, you, you get married, and then uh, <laughs> by the time you're 21, that's it, it's pretty much you're retired and staring death in the face. I'm, I'm a walking miracle. <laughs> um, so uh, the song is uh, about... Um, uh, my teenage years. It starts when I was, you know, 13 and then all the way to 20. This is called 20. Sure, it's a gas You're stuck in an Wishing you were so very far from here when you're 13. What for's and why? If he's got it, why? Then I'd rather be in another sea when I'm 14. Just not fair. And I'm sure that it's changed this 
some degree Christ's advice say never as it seems when you're 16 done a lot. Cool. <clears throat> Millport, June 1995. Um, we were a five-piece band. Um, at one point we were a six-piece. We even have, a, we even had a, a, like a saxophonist in the band. <laughs> But everything, everything kind of, when you have a saxophone player in the band, everything kind of sounds like Cagney and Lacey after a while, you know, it's got a bit of... <laughs> and uh, so I said to the guys, like, look, at this point, I'm going to go and, and, and write songs for the band. I'm going to take charge. I'm going to go. I'm going to write some hits. And uh, I'm going to go to this place, Millport. Uh, then, and just to give you a little geography lesson, uh, Millport is in Scotland. This is this is uh, this is our country. This is where we come from, <laughs> and uh, in fact, this is how this is how Scottish people actually see the British Isles. You know, you, you notice that England is completely underwater <laughs> at the bottom. Um, but anyway, yeah. So Millport is uh, uh, is just in here, and uh, if you sort of zoom in on a sort of a very high tech Google Earth mechanism, like boom, you get this, and this is the island. And you can go round the island on, on a bike. It takes you about two hours. And it used to be a destination, like the destination, holiday destination for, for people in, you know, Scotland, Glasgow, the west coast of Scotland. But then you had package holidays and everyone started going there. And this place is now like the place that Morrissey sings about in Every Day is Like Sunday. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so um, since we've been on this, this tour, we've noticed some some... Highlights of, of the island that I, I want to point out. There's um, there's butter lump. If you ever go, go and check it out. <laughs> it's beautiful, apparently. And uh, my favourite is uh, is up the top there. It's um, stinking bay. <laughs> when what were they thinking? I think Scottish people are just really honest. They're like, man, what are we going to call it? I don't know. Let's call it stinking bay. So, <laughs> so this is where I was, and and I had this kind of. Uh, I had this image, and most people do, of Scotland as being this, you know, the, the rolling hills and valleys and heather and it's you know, rugged and beautiful and romantic. And, and I had that too. And I went there and I was like, right. And when I opened the curtains in the little um, apartment that I, I was in, um, my view was this. This is, this is Hunterston B nuclear power station, which is <laughs> it's about 500 metres across the water. <laughs> and um, so I would wake up every morning and look at this. And, uh, and try and get inspired. Um, I've got a more romantic picture of it here with the sun setting. Let's see if it works. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> That's a bit more romantic. Uh, the next couple of songs I always think of as our, uh, there was maybe a leak while we were there and, 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 they, and, I, and I breathed in some, some mad sort of plutonium thing or something. And these are our, so these, these next couple of songs are, are, are nuclear songs. Okay, here we go. One. <laughs> I would really like to talk with you
I turn and walk the other way But today I'll stay Thanks. Um, so, like I said, I was me, me and Granda were, were close, and I'd always go round, and I think that generation, or you know, your your grandparents' generation, always have all this kind of cool stuff, you know. The well, the next song has got loads of wishes in it. They're wishes that kind of remind me of something that he would have said to me. They're not like modern wishes, like I wish I, I wish I had ten million dollars and a ten incher. Um, but <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're they're like proper, proper, nice wishes. <laughs> world wishes, world wishes. Um, this is um, this is called Turn. <laughs> Thank you. 
right. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, is it third down? Um, so, uh, when I was about six or seven, I, I was on a, 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 a train journey up from England up to, up to Glasgow, and um, I must have had, I don't know, too much candy or too much chocolate or something, and I was going mental on the train, like, <laughs> running up and down and driving my mum crazy. And there was this old gentleman sitting kind of across from us, you know, in the, in the train, and he, he spotted her despair, and he, he, he asked if, you know, I'll take him off your hands for a, a bit of the journey and entertain him if you want, you know, colour in pictures with him, and I was like, yeah! <laughs> So I sat down and he was so, he was cool. He was, was like, like a, some weird kind of angel kind of guy. Like, have you ever seen Wings of Desire, that film? Um, uh, anyway, if you've seen it, he was like one of the guys in that film. And uh, we played and we drew pictures and he told me all these cool stories about when he was a young guy, like riding his motorbike across the fourth road bridge in Edinburgh. And I was like, wow, wow, you're a motorbike, wow. And, um, at the end of the, at the end of the, um, at the end of the trip, it was really, I'd, I'd really taken a shine to him. He'd really, really taken a shine to me. And um, I was like, no, you know, as kids do, don't go. My mum's like, come on. And he, he slipped me this bit of paper, you know, sort of like here. And um, I gave it to my mum. And when we got home, she read it to me. And it was like a poem. And uh, I've still got it. And it, uh, it reads, uh, as you are now, so once was I. Remember this as time goes by. As I am now, soon you will be. Remember this and pray for me. And I remember at the time going, wow, that's, that's kind of deep. And, um, and <laughs> being sex going, hmm. Um, but I've kept it, it's, it's still got it. And we don't have like hope, I didn't have a hope chest. We had to, get, we had called it a memory bag. It's like this plastic bag with loads of <laughs> old jotters and like things from when you were little. I've still got this little ripped off thing and uh, the next song, I always figured that I'd nicked the, the, the sort of tagline of this next song from um, Come As You Are from Nirvana. Um, when actually I suddenly realised, no, no, it, 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 the, the tagline is actually taken from this amazing poem that was given to me by this, by this dude. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this is called As You Are. One. Since I was young, I had no 
Um, yeah. Slides. Glasgow, December 26th. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> yeah, the doors are locked. Did you bring your sleeping bags? <clears throat> um, this was um, the day after Christmas. <clears throat> and uh, we were in like the coldest flat in Glasgow. And it was like, uh, the, the, it was the coldest winter since records began. It was so, so cold outside, really, really cold. And um, the, uh, the, the, there was ice, like thick ice on the insides of our windows. And um, all the guys were, you know, in nice warm houses with their families enjoying their Christmas turkey, you know. And I was there on my own. And I thought, I, before I went there, I was like, I got to get some, some heat in the, the house. So I, I hustled some some. Um, heaters, they're called Carler gas heaters. They've got like a butane tank in the back. They look like this. And there's like, I got two of them. You're only really supposed to have one in a room with the windows open. But I had, I had two <laughs> with the windows closed and the door shut and I'm like full blast, like blazing. <laughs> and I was slowly gassing myself. <laughs> but I didn't realize that I'm getting really like, woo, <laughs> as the night is continuing. <clears throat> Around about the same time, you know, our, our, our friends Oasis were, were, were flying high in the charts and Wonderwall, the song Wonderwall was everywhere and um, Noel Gallagher was like a big, you know, big hero of mine. Um, <laughs> the, the, yeah, this is the, the most, the, the best picture I could get, uh, you know, at short notice. <clears throat> um, so, um, so Noel was, was kicking about with Wonderwall and I was sitting this night trying to work out the chords to it and um, he, he, he's always said, you know, like, how he's taking chords and he's taking this and that from here to there, or T-Rex, or you know maybe the Beatles or something. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> we, uh, I thought I'm going to nick his chords. I'm going to take these chords and I'm going to make a song around them. So I, 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 the chords to Wonder will go. And so I took those chords and in this song though I thought if he ever hears this uh, he'll know. He's, he'll he'll be he'll be upset, you know. So I put a I put a little a little line in it just for him. Like he was me, like unemployed in this this flat in Glasgow. You know, you know, like this was the biggest band in Britain. I'm like, maybe maybe he might hear this at one point. So I better put something in. So I put this this line in that said, uh, "What's a wonder wall anyway?" Yeah, you know, kind of like <laughs> I, I've nicked your chords. Yeah, <laughs> I know I've nicked them, so it's okay. Don't put me in the boss. <laughs> so. Uh, Anyway, so that was going on. Um, as I said, I'd just been dumped and I was feeling really like, whoa. I was reading this book by Franz Kafka <clears throat> called Letters to, <laughs> Letters to Felis. Um, and this book is like this thick and it's got like, it's, uh, it's all like one way correspondence. There's no letters back from this girl. You, and he only met her twice. <laughs> yeah, slightly creepy. But anyway, I was, <clears throat> I was like, oh man, I'm feeling your pain, man. <laughs> And our names are almost the same, you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, they, so I was reading this and getting right into this and writing lots of letters and not getting any replies myself. Um, there was also, a, I was trying to work out a, a song called 7475 by a band called The Connells, um, who are a, a really great band from, from over here. And uh, anyway, to recap, right, let's just jump back here. <laughs> high, high on butane, right? <laughs> Nick and Noel's chords. Feeling Franz pain. Is it Franz's? I will say Franz's. Franz's. Feeling Franz's pain and, um, and trying to work out the corners. Um, and and this, is, this is the song I, 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 that I came up with. This is called Writing to Reach You. One, two, three. <laughs>
Thank you. After we recorded our first record, um, our producer, Steve Lillywhite, said uh, to me, he's like, Fran, you should go on holiday. You look terrible. I was like, thanks, Steve. I'm, well, that's nice. I'll, I'll go, though. And I wasn't used to going on. I didn't really know where to go. And um, I asked our accountant, and, and he was like, go to, go to Israel. So I, I, I went. <laughs> Because uh, it was this, it was apparently going to be the sunniest place at that time of year, um, and so I went there. And uh, um, you, if you take any photographs just now, <laughs> you'll be wondering. Your friends will be like, "What kind of gig was this?" You were <laughs> Mazel Tov, <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So I, I went here in search of sunshine, and it, it literally it, it rained all the whole holiday, the whole time I was there pissed me rain and I sat in my room and I wrote this song kind of sort of to cheer myself up that the, um, it went um, why does it always rain on me because I lied but I thought it was a I was just writing a, when you write you don't go this is a big chorus I was like this is a verse so I'm like why does it always rain on me when I was alive when I was 17 and I wrote a second verse for it which is kind of shit <laughs> which I'll play it went why does it always rain on you is it because I picked you up in 92? <laughs> St stink bomb, it was the uh, shit. So anyway, that, that, that sort of floated around this little thing and it cheered me up while I was there. And um, I um, <clears throat> found myself like six months later in Spain and our manager had just been on the phone. Our, our first album, Good Feeling, had come out and it, it, you couldn't have picked a worse name for that album for the, the reaction it got. It was just like, it was like... <laughs> Billy Connolly, Billy Connolly has this saying about like something that doesn't really happen the way you want it. It was, it was um, like a fart in a spacesuit. <laughs> it was received like that. It just was going badly. And um, I was on the phone to our manager and, and he was trying to sort of do the damage limitation on me. He's like, oh no, everything's fine. It's, oh, don't worry, you know, it's cool. You know, there's a couple of things going to happen. It's, don't worry, it's going to be cool. It's going to be really cool. I'm like, you're right. And I was feeling kind of like really, you know, and so I wrote this verse and it, um, that, that, you know, I can't sleep tonight. Literally, I was like, everybody's saying everything's all right. In the second verse of Why Does It Always Rain On Me, there's a line that goes, um, I'm being held up by invisible men. And these invisible men are like the the A&R the guys and the managers and all the people in the background. And they kind of like hold you up when you're in a band. You know, they, they kind of support you, but they also kind of hold you up, you know? 
give us your songs. Have another broken heart, you know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like music to an A&R man's ears when you tell him you've just been dumped. He's like, oh, that's terrible. Ka-ching! He's like, some good songs coming. <laughs> so bad. I'm so, I feel so sorry for you. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so... With that in mind, um, yeah, I wrote the, the verse and, and, and put these two sort of disparate little things together. I knew there was a chorus or something that would go with this, this little verse and then they, they found themselves. So I've, I, I created a, a, a flag which, which to commemorate that event, which is the Spanglo-Israeli flag. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I kind of... I, 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 we, we've been joking about how the, the soccer team might look quite cool for this team. Like half of them will be going, holy, and half of them will be going, oi. <laughs> anyway, this is, this is, um, this is, uh, this is called Why Does It Always Rain On Me? One, Yeah. 
Um, these are the lyrics to Flowers in the Window. They were, they were in 1998 now, so we're slowly sort of edging forward um, in time. They were written in France in, in 1998. And I was, uh, we were staying at this big chateau in, 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 in France. And, um, and the guys all, I, I, they all, they all went out for a drink one night uh, and I stayed in. And I say a drink, I mean more, yeah. <laughs> Quite a, quite a lot of quite a lot of alcohol was consumed because around about three o'clock in the morning, I heard them like coming back from the from the bar, and the, you hear the doors like bursting open, like <laughs> and they're coming in like full flower of scarlet, singing these, <laughs> and like the sound of things being knocked over and you know breaking glass, and uh, and then ten minutes later, silence. They had all gone to sleep very fast. And so I'm in my room and I'm kind of like, I'm thinking like, um, like, oh, you know. And then 10 minutes after that, I heard the worst sound you can hear in a band is the sound of someone choking. And I was like, what the hell is that? And it's this kind of... So I was like, oh my God. And I like leapt out of bed and jumped into the hallway and I'm like trying to like source where this thing is coming from with my spidey senses. Like, what the hell? And uh, I saw, I, I thought, this door, bam, and I went into the first door, and like, Andy is, is, is lying, <laughs> spread eagle on the bed, like the television on full. He's like fully clothed. His glasses are slightly like, kind of like that. And he's, but he's, he's fast asleep, but still chewing his chewing gum, kind of like. <laughs> completely fast asleep. But he was okay, I knew he would be fine. <laughs> We've got like reams of film of us like bursting in hotel hotel rooms, and Andy's like fast asleep, like still chewing. And anyway, so he's fine. So I run out into the hall again. I'm like fuck, 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 fuck. Poof, into the second room, and Neil, our drummer, is lying like half kind of on the bed, half off the bed. His trousers like at his his ankles, his underpants down there as well, total all exposed. You know, like oh my god, all like why is it a different colour than the rest of his body? <laughs> And uh, why, why is that, by the way? It's in, in the shade all year, and yeah, it's got a great tan. Any, any doctors or anyone just maybe after the show explain that to me? I, I've always wanted to know. So Neil's fine, and I got out of there really quickly, and it's suddenly dawning on me, oh my God, it's Dougie, the cool guy. He's choking, oh my God. So I was like, bam, bam, going in no room, and in this room and that room, and... Eventually, he's up the top, and I burst in his room. He's, like, leaning over the window, like, throwing up, and he's, he's run out of sick, so he's doing that ah, thing out the window. And I'm like, Dougie, Dougie, oh, my God, are you okay? I was nearly crying. I was so panicking. And Dougie, like, swung around. And uh, there's a sort of scale of, of drunkenness that Dougie gets, and the more drunk Dougie gets, the more like his mummy gets. <laughs> you know, kind of like sort of camp and slightly, you know, kind of like, Ooh. And uh, so he's, Dougie sort of swings around. He's like, what are you looking at? Me? There's nothing wrong with me. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. My heart's like beating like a jackhammer. And, and I, um, so I, 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 just, I went back to my room and I... Um, I had this, this, uh, I had this little tune going about, and um, I wrote these these lyrics in like ten minutes. And if you, this is the back end of it. What's that buzzing noise? Can you hear that? Mm. No, no, no. There's another one. Mm. Giles. It's like, yeah, it's, it, it <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Is it you? <laughs> so anyway, this is the back. This is the back end. If you look, like there's there's a there's a there's a line in the song that goes, "A melting snowman." I was told, and there's the melting snowman. Four years at art school. There you go. <laughs> and uh, this is, the, I guess, this is the, the fastest song I ever wrote. But I wrote it like full of adrenaline. It was like, Poof! and um, and it's called um, "Flowers in the Window." It has no no bearing on like throwing up out of a window. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> It's, it's to do with meeting, meeting the person you know you want to be with and, and spend the rest of your days with. This is called uh, Flowers in the Window. One. But there was no one there to hold 
Thanks a lot. That, okay, I've got a fluffy towel tonight. <laughs> um, so, oh yeah, we were doing, we were doing, well, we, we'd kind of run out of B-sides and I was sitting one, one night um, trying to write a B-side before we went into the studio. And B, you know what a B-side is? Yeah, I guess you, you, you used to get them. We used to have B-sides. We don't have them anymore. Um, but I, and we were, we'd run out and um, I, I was sitting there watching MTV with the sound turned down and there was some, some program on and it said at the bottom, swing beat. And I was like, and there was all like guys under a flyover all kind of going, oh yeah, swing beat, man. And, <laughs> and I was like, right, whatever that is, swing beat, it's on. But, and I, but I was, I had it on kind of to, to, to distract myself while I was piddling about. And um, I wrote this kind of, Thing and I was, uh, the chords went, and it, uh, when I saw this swing beat thing, I, I started singing, if you swing, 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 oh, swing, brilliant, that's like, you know, when you're swinging in a wee kid and you're on the swings and your parents are pushing you and it's just like, oh, and amazing, and you're like, faster, higher, keep doing it, and you're like, if you're the parent, you're like, oh, <laughs> wish they'd learn to do that thing with their feet, you know, <laughs> arms are falling off here, yeah. but um, anyway, um, so I'm going, Swag, what, this, if, this, is a, this is big, this is going to be a big song, that everyone's going to rush to the parks, and all these big guys in suits on the swing, like, yeah, <laughs> getting arrested, and um, anyway, so I, I went, <laughs> I went to, um, 
I went to the band the next day and I'm like, guys, check it out, check. If you sing, swing, 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 swing. And the guys, Dougie, Dougie's like, Franny, what are you writing a song about wife swapping for? <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, no, it didn't quit because it was so far away from what my sort of innocent swing. And like the keys dropping in the bowl, I just didn't like equate the two together. And, but I was in my sort of exuberance in the moment. I was like, come on, swing. Everyone will be right into it. Come on, we'll do it. And we, we demoed it as, as swing. And, uh, and halfway through, uh, it, it changed from swing to sing. And just by accident, I sung it wrong. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And, and it, then it, it became sing. And, and, and I think that's a lot, I think a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, this, this, otherwise, this gig might have been a completely different kind of show tonight. Yeah, the, this, the sound of like keys dropping in a bowl throughout the, 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 the night. <laughs> anyway, this is it. This is sing. One, two. Jake Gyllenhaal was in a film called Moonlight Mile, and um, thanks. I mean, I, I wasn't in it, he was in it. 
but the, the, the director uh, came up and asked us to, to write a song for, for the film. And uh, I was like, well, what's, what's it about? And he was like, uh, well, it's about you know, people dying and death and mourning and, uh, and you know, sadness and you know, coming to terms with it. I'm like, I'm your man. <laughs> I'm, I'm right in there, that's right up my street. <laughs> so uh, I wrote this next song for that film. This is called Love Will Come Through. One, two, three. Can't get to sleep and I can't live alone in this life. So look up, take it away, don't look da 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 down the mountain. If the world isn't turning, your heart won't return anyone, anything, anyhow. So take Crossroads of high roads and low roads And I got a feeling tried If it's real what I'm feeling There's no make-believe in the sound Of the wings of the fly of a dove Take it away, don't go da-da-da-down Mountain, if the world isn't turning Your heart For you, that's nice. Oh, fucking yeah, nice there. Eh? Come, yeah, you get lost behind stage, you get a margarita. Oh, you asked him for it. Oh, nice. Good, good for you. I don't, I know, I'm not, no way. They make, they give me the, the bile. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, anyway, right, so, um, this next song was written in New York City, actually. Um, um, and uh, it was kind of, it's, it's, it's about being in, in, in a long-term relationship with, with someone, whether it's, you know, like in a band with four guys or with your girlfriend or wife or your, your parents or your sister or brother. And when you're in this long-term thing, it's like almost like, I guess like an old pair of jeans, the, the stitching kind of gets loose, you know, and, and, uh, or, you know, it stretches and you want to, I guess, 
make them a bit tighter again, so you you, you boil wash them or something. <laughs> yeah, I know where this, this this analogy is going, but <laughs> it's like trying to pull it together. You take, I, I guess, you kind of take each other for granted after a while, you know. And um, so the the song is just basically trying to say, like, let's try and. Um, I know you'll always be there, but you know, let's try and pull ourselves a little bit closer. This is called closer. This is the last song, and we're we're going to say also like thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, it's uh, great to see everyone. And the last record we did um, was kind of like uh, we we got inspired. We we did a, a session uh, for Radio Two in Britain, and um, they asked t ten bands or eleven bands, I think, to to go in and re-record Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. But like, do it. The only catch was 
that you had to do it using the same technology as the Beatles use, so like a four-track machine, and like no like you know no digital stuff, just four-track. And we were like, yeah, it's amazing. And the best part about it was we got to work with Jeff Emmerich, who recorded that album. Um, so we went there, and um, it was like um, it was it was amazing. Um, and he was really excited. We were like running about and going under the uh, the stairs to try and get it to be echoey and reverby and um, and Jeff's like, yeah, let's go there. And uh, and uh, so we got really inspired and, and about, you know, when it came to do the, our last record, we, we thought, well, let's try and do it like that. But we couldn't get this four, these four tracks are like museum pieces. They're, they're like, uh, you can't get them. So we got a 16 track. We borrowed one from, a, from Abbey Road um, in London. And... Uh, it's the closest thing to a museum piece you could get. Uh, it took like two days to set it up and everything. The whole idea was to record it as live and do very few overdubs. Um, one of the things I think that's getting lost a little bit in the current sort of way of recording is great performances of full bands like playing together like in a room, like all shitting themselves, going, oh, who's going to fuck up first? Who's going to fuck up first? <laughs> And that's the that's the thing that that's the thing the invisible like that makes a record just have that magic thing and you know you go back even further to like those photographs you see of Frank Sinatra standing in the middle of a an orchestra like eighty piece orchestra with a mic and they do it in one take and he's like come fly with me and the whole the whole orchestra shit and themselves like fuck, fuck. the fiddle guy oh no fuck, fuck. who's gonna fuck up and that is. That is something that is, is changing because now everyone does it almost like in a separate kind of room is from one another and, and, and not at the same time. So we were like, no, you know, let's do it that way um, and got totally inspired. So on the last day of the, the recording session, we're all in the studio and we're doing like, a, I don't know, like a tambourine overdub or something like that. And it's just a boring last day. You know, we've done pretty much the whole thing and suddenly the door opens and like in walks... Paul fucking McCartney. <laughs> and we were like, oh. and he, a part of, he lives down the street from the studio and just happened to kind of, well, I wonder who's in the, you know, in the studio. I'm gonna go. <laughs> and he's got like the, he's so, the thing about Paul, right, is he's, he's like, you, you forget that who he is after about 30 seconds because he's way down to earth. He kind of came in, he's got his boy James with him. And Paul's got two plastic bags, an Oxfam bag, and he's got his bananas and onions, and he's got his shopping, and he's just like, hello, fellas. <laughs> and, and then it sort of hits you occasionally throughout the thing, like, it's Paul McCartney, oh my God. And uh, our producer was standing the whole time like this. <laughs> he didn't move for half an hour. And anyway, he was just passing by, and he wanted to check out what band was in recording in the studio that day, and it was us. And I thought it was amazing that it kind of gone that sort of thing went full circle and he recognised the tape machine he's like what's that and we're like oh, we got it from Abbey Road and he's all I think we use this and we're like yes <laughs> oh yeah it's got the Beatles on it it's got their vibe in there <laughs> anyway this, uh, this is the last song from our, our last record um, and um, it's uh, it's kind of like this, the song is imagine like if you'd lost someone and they came back for you know, to say goodbye to you after they passed away. Me, kind of thinking, what what would they say? This is called Before You Were Young. One, two, three. In the days before you were young We used to sit in the morning sun to turn the radio on What happened? We'd see our lives in the eyes of fate We'd take our cradles to the grave But even then we're never safe From danger And I never learned to dance 
second chance Whatever I'll take the breath away from your sighs And wipe the tears away from your eyes And hope the fire never dies Inside you Bye-bye.